Hey everyone, Mr. Justin here with the Hernando County Public Library System and thank you so much for joining us for week six of our Tales and Tales summer reading program and this week it's all about insects. So we're going to see some books about creepy crawly bugs and insects and we'll have our animal of the week and then we'll end with this week's craft. So when you think of bugs and insects what do you think of? Maybe grasshoppers and beetles and bees and a lot of cool uh, caterpillars, a lot of cool creepy crawly stuff that we will be reading in today's books. But before we begin, we are going to start with our very first story and this, this is called Twig. And this is going to feature a stick bug and there she is right there and this is called Twig. It is written and illustrated by Ara Parker and it is published by Simon & Schuster Publishing. And this is Twig. And you can see her right there. And there we go. Bug school was a buzz with hundreds of shiny, scurrying shapes. But not one bug noticed the new girl, Heidi, tall and long, like the twig of a tree. There she is right there. She blends in with the trees because she's a stick bug. Heidi waved hello to everyone, but her teacher didn't even look up from her looping and threading. Scarlet and the spiderlings didn't see her. Nor did the cockroach twins, or the stinky bug, or little Midge. Miss Orb was a golden silk weaver in a web spinning champion. Good morning, class, she said, and as she hung up her weaving <gasps> on the hat stand. Oh no, that's not a hat stand, that's Heidi the stick bug. Okay, now let's begin our counting lesson, she said. One, two, three. One, two, three. I'm not a hat stand. Can't you see? Heidi stood as still and straight as a twig. The classroom was a flurry of counting and color, but nobody noticed Heidi. There she is right there. Nobody saw her at lunchtime. Nobody saw her here or there or anywhere. Nobody noticed Heidi at all. One, two, three. One, two, three. Why won't someone play with me? Miss Orb loved teaching everyone how to weave. Weaving was tricky with sticky, fiddly threads. Mitch needed a little bit of help from the cockroach twins. Well, the spiderlings did really well, and the stinky bug made a present for Nana. And Scarlet found lots of things to add to her weaving. An interesting leaf, a piece of bark shaped like a heart, a blue crackly pebble, and a sprinkle of dirt. And then she found a twig. The twig let out a surprised yelp. I'm not a twig, it's me, I'm Heidi. And for the very first time, everyone finally saw her. Oops, said Scarlet, you look so much like a twig. Oh, there you are, Heidi, said Miss Orb. It seems your camouflage has been working too well. Midge just stared, for he could hardly believe it. Miss Orb had a wonderful idea. Okay, let's welcome Heidi to our class by weaving her a scarf. Everybody can make a square and we'll sew them together. Then we'll be able to see her wherever she is. So they looped and threaded and spun all afternoon and Heidi joined in too. It was the best weaving they had ever done. Heidi smiled and spun and twirled. She loved her new scarf. And everyone could see how happy she was. These days, Heidi always finds friends in the playground. She takes care of gaps when they go on adventures, and Heidi helps reach things up high. She even discovered a talent for basketball, and Heidi always wears her scarf, except when it's time to play her favorite game, hide and seek. There she is. I bet she's really good at hide and seek. And that is the end of the story called Twig. There we go, good job. And we've got our first song, and uh-oh, I see, I see a fly around the room. I see a fly, I see a fly, and a fly is on my face. A fly is on my face. 
Hi ho, just watch me go. A fly is on my face. And oh, a gnat is on my nose. A gnat is on my nose. Hi ho, just watch me go. A gnat is on my nose. Uh oh, uh oh, oh no, oh no. Bzzz, uh, hornets on my head. A hornet's on my head. Hi ho, just watch it go. A hornet's on my head. Last one. And bzzz, a bee is on my back. A bee is on my back. Hi ho, just watch me go. A bee was on my back. There we go. Let's get our next story. And this is called The Very Quiet Cricket. Shh. It's written and illustrated by Eric Carl and published by Penguin Random House Publishing. Because crickets usually chirp, right? But this is gonna be a very quiet cricket. One warm day, off from a tiny egg, a little cricket was born. Welcome, chirped a big cricket, rubbing his wings together. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good morning, whizzed a locust, spinning through the air. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Hello, whispered a praying mantis, scraping its huge front legs together. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good day, crunched a worm, munching its way out of an apple. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Hi, bubbled a spittle bug, slurping in a sea of froth. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good afternoon, screeched a cicada, clinging to a branch of a tree. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Zow are you, hummed a bumblebee, flying from flower to flower. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good evening, whirred a dragonfly gliding above the water. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good night, buzzed the mosquitoes, dancing among the stars. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. A luna moth sailed quietly through the night, and the cricket enjoyed the stillness. As the luna moth disappeared silently into the distance, the cricket saw another cricket. She too was a very quiet cricket. And then he rubbed his wings together one more time. And this time he chirped the most beautiful sound that she had ever heard. And there are 4,000 different kinds of crickets. Some live underground, others above. Some live in shrubs or trees, and some even in the water. Both male and female crickets can hear, but only the males can make that sound. By rubbing his wings together, he chirps. And some people say that it sounds like a song. And that is the end. There we go. And let's go ahead and play our game for the week. And we have our rugs. We have eight rugs. Green, purple, orange, white, yellow, black, red, and brown. And we have our little bug hiding behind a rug. So we're going to do our rhyme. Little bug, little bug, are you behind the whatever color we choose? Rug. And we're going to lift up the rug and see if little bug is there. So what color should we choose first? Red? Let's do red. Little bug, little bug, are you behind the red rug? And here we go, and no little bug. Uh-oh. What color should we try next? Want to try purple? Let's try purple. Little bug, little bug, are you behind the purple rug? Let's try purple rug, and no little bug. Okay. Which one should we try next? You want to try the black rug? Let's try the black one. 
Little bug, little bug, are you behind the black rug? And here we go, and... No, no little bug. We have five rugs left. Green, orange, white, yellow, and brown. Which one should we try next? You wanna try orange? Let's try the orange rug, are you ready? Little bug, little bug, are you behind the orange rug? And... No, no little bug. So we only have four left. Green, white, yellow, and brown. Let's try the white rug. Okay, let's try the white rug. Little bug, little bug, are you behind the white rug? And here we go, and... No, no little bug is not there. We only have three left. Which one should we try next? Do I hear yellow? Let's try yellow. Okay. Little bug, little bug, are you behind the yellow rug? Let's find out, and wow, there is our little bug. If you said yellow, congratulations. Thank you so much for helping me find little bug behind the yellow rug. Good job, everyone. So let's get to our last book before we do our animal of the week and then our craft. And this is Swarm of Bees, written by Lemony Snicket, illustrated by Rilla Alexander, and published by Little, Brown, and Company. Swarm of bees, swarm of bees. Oh no, you are so angry. What will you do? Swarm of bees, swarm of bees. Will you sting the sailor? No, he's been on a ship for nine months and is hurrying to hug his mother. Swarm of bees, swarm of bees. Uh-oh, will you sting the mother? No, she's about to tell the bricklayer about her new hairdo. Swarm of bees, swarm of bees. Will you sting the bricklayer? No, he's starting a new part of the wall. He's feeling very busy and very hungry. Swarm of bees, you are still feeling angry, but you can't sting anyone at the food truck. The chefs are chopping onions as quick as they can, and the customers are deciding what to drink with their lunches. You can't sting the cat. The cat is trying very carefully to hide in the grass. And cat, you can't pounce on the bird. It has a worm in its mouth. Swarm of bees, swarm of bees. You can't sting the man in the second floor apartment watching television. His window is shut anyway because his neighbors are making so much noise. And you can't sting the neighbors. They are playing card games on the balcony and the little cousin is about to win. You are still angry, but you can't sting the little cousin. She already hurt herself today when she stubbed her toe and that's why she's wearing that bandage. Swarm of bees, are you gonna sting the boy? He keeps throwing tomatoes. He threw one at the little cousin and stained her bandage. He threw one at the neighbor's window and made a mess. He threw two tomatoes at the cat, three tomatoes at the bird, who dropped the worm into a tomato on the ground. The boy threw a bunch of tomatoes at the food truck. He shouldn't do that. The boy threw tomatoes at the pricklayer. He threw tomatoes at the mother's hairdo and look, Swarm of bees. He threw a tomato at the sailor and the sailor is chasing him. Where did they go, swarm of bees? Where is everybody? In the backyard? Watch out for the laundry. In the alley? Watch out for the tow truck. Around the corner? Watch out for the beekeeper. Beekeeper? Swarm of bees. Well, now you're in a sack. It's warm and cozy in there, and you calm down, and soon you'll be going home. It can feel good to be angry, but it can feel better to stop. And now, it's time to clean up all those tomatoes. And there we go, that is the end of Swarm of Bees. There we go. And let's see our animal of the week, which is gonna be an insect, because we are reading all about insects this week. And our animal of the week is going to be right here. The ladybug, look at the ladybug. And the ladybug is actually a type of beetle. And there are more than 4,000 kinds of ladybugs. They can be black, brown, orange, yellow, or of course what we mostly see, red. 
They have two pairs of wings and six legs like most insects do. And they are useful to farmers because they eat insects that are harmful to crops. And adult ladybugs can actually hibernate during the winter. Like butterflies, ladybugs also go through metamorphosis and they have four stages, egg, larva, pupa, and finally, the adult. And bright colors help them from being attacked by birds. But when they are attacked, they release small drops of a fluid, almost like blood, right? With an unpleasant taste as a defense mechanism to kind of make them taste bad and to scare away the predators like birds. And there is our animal of the week, the ladybug. And you can come to the branch and when you pick up the craft, you can pick up the fun little worksheet that will be all about the ladybug. And of course, when you do go to the library, make sure you get your craft this week, which is, this looks almost like a ladybug. It is our love bug magnet craft. And it's not like the love bugs we see around Florida. This is a cute little clothespin love bug right here. So you can pick up the little bag and I'll have everything you need, including the magnet. So you're gonna follow the instructions, put it together just like this. You might have a couple other designs rather than just this one specific design. And then you can put the magnet on the back and you can put it on a refrigerator to hang and to see your little magnet. You can even use the clip and you can put coloring pages or recipes hanging down that you can display on your refrigerator. So we have our love bug craft. And make sure you also come to the library, you pick up a reading log and read to earn like little stuffed animals and make sure you participate in reading with the rays and you can read uh, 24 hours the, throughout the summer to earn free race tickets and you can get that information um, on the li library website at the Rays website or you can come here to the library and we can give you that information too. So thank you so much for joining us. I hope everybody had so much fun with all of our insect books today and we'll see you next week. Bye everyone.